Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the Wild Wisdom Wellbeing guest slot. And this morning, I'm absolutely delighted to have Claire Bishop of Claire Victoria uh, Photography with me. And Claire, I was looking at your website this morning, just kind of looking more into what you do to refresh my memory before doing this live. And I loved your kind of tagline, find yourself in nature. And seriously, if you haven't looked at Victoria, Claire Victoria's work and, and the website, you have to, because your website is so beautiful. It just really puts across all the stuff that you do about nature, natural light, uh, being true to yourself, well-being. They're, they're so uplifting, the pictures. You almost feel that you're there in, some of them are in the woods and things like that. And it really just Oh, it was so uplifting just to look at the pictures. So I highly recommend that if you haven't already taken a look at the website. And also, I love that you said your work is all around capturing the beauty of you, the, the subject, mm -hmm. with ease and simplicity amongst yes. nature. And those are two big words for me, ease and simplicity, keeping it simple and feeling at ease and flow with what you're doing and not pushing it, not striving, not trying too hard. And then you're just out there capturing it with your yeah. lens. Yeah. So would you tell us a little bit about yourself, who is Claire, and how you came to be doing this amazing work? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Claire, I'm a photographer. I initially um, studied photography at A-level um, at school, and I think I you know. I think since having, as a child, I think I'm pretty sure I carried a camera everywhere. Um, I was lucky to grow up on a farm, so always kind of out walking. Um, I also did, I'm also an only child, so I think <laughs> spending time with my camera, walking the fields, you know, when mum and dad were working, was pretty. Um, just that's just what I did, and just had my own adventures. And yeah, and I mean, I'm, I'm now a mum of four boys. Uh, we live in South Gloucestershire countryside. I moved out from Bristol a few years back just literally because I felt that need to want to move and be in the country for the children and for me. Um, yeah, and I mean, my love of photography, it kind of, it's really interesting how it, it just kind of all comes together without even realising. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I, just the natural side of it, bringing nature and photography together and then sharing that and taking people out in nature all just kind of feels so natural and that's just what we should do and we feel seeing people transform in nature yeah. is quite something yeah um, yeah that's a really interesting concept of just as soon as you put somebody in a natural environment mm -hmm. as in you're right in the woods or you're by the seaside or whatever it is are you out in nature it does it is transformative isn't it and you just i guess you probably see people if you've met them originally to have a discussion or you've talked to them on the phone or whatever it is to organize the shoot mm -hmm. and they've maybe been a little bit more stiff or formal and then you put somebody out in nature and you just you take that big breath don't you and you just sigh and suddenly relax and the shoulders come down and all of these things yes. i think um nature has that it, it, it makes us naturally just feel at ease and relax and your shoulders drop and you know naturally when you walk and you take a big deep breath or you might notice a scene and, and feel like completely just at one you know that awe that natural awe that you kind of think wow this look at that view um it, you know people experience that quite a lot when they watch the sunset or the sunrise but actually that's something you, you can experience just by stopping and letting yourself kind of ground into your environment and just observing whatever you see um, so yeah, I mean, working with others in nature, you know, I've always had a very natural style to my photography and it's about real life moments and real people and capturing real emotion. And then when you <laughs> bring nature into that, it just, people just, yeah, do just naturally dissolve into their environment and also their true personality comes through, um, with ease. So there's no pretense, there's no, for, you know, there's no falseness, there's no hidden, you know, it's completely them. And that's what makes the images so wonderful is that it really does connect with others because it's that real person, that real, you know, the eyes light up. There's a natural spark. <laughs> so um, it's one. I love it. <laughs> and you talk on your website about how you capture story and you capture emotions, as you've just said. 
And I was even on a meeting last night where we were talking about how as human beings, we have so much more actually in common and that connects us one to another compared to our differences. Our differences are there. And often that's what we focus on. That's what we see because they're on the surface. Mm -hmm. And because they are different, then they're quite easy to spot because, oh, you're different from me. But when we look a bit deeper and when we relax and when we can see beyond the, the masks or the formality that we hold often yeah. at many, in many parts of our life, many times of the day, you just go out into nature and you let go of all of that. Absolutely. And, and that must be what's really sh shining out in your photographs and, and that connection that you can then have and an emotional connection because mm -hmm. you look at your photographs and you see that awe, you see that joy and therefore feel that connection. That's another human having that emotion. And I'm looking at the view and feeling that same emotion. Yeah. Automatic connection. Yeah. I think it's well, it's our all of our natural environment, are we? Because we are nature. We, you know, it's going back, you know, thousands of years, it's where we all naturally were. So I mean that for anybody in a natural environment and they do absolutely, you know, they flourish or they just relax and feel at ease. So yeah, I think that's, you're right, everyone can connect to having that feeling and to experiencing that moment. And so the idea is that if we can share more and more of our us enjoying our natural environment and being out in nature and that true connection, you know, not using nature as a backdrop, but actually, you know, sharing that real, true, honest connection of ourselves within nature, then it will inspire us to get outside more and reconnect. And I love the concept, and it's one that I use myself, as you know, to reconnect with yourself and your own inner nature through the nature all around us. And I saw on your website where you talk about how nature teaches us so much. There are so many valuable lessons that we can learn and, and grow through spending time in nature. Just even thinking about the seasons we were talking this morning, just before we're coming live, about how it doesn't really feel like summer here in the UK at the moment, but then... They're talking about a heat wave coming. Yeah. So all of these things, we, we kind of learn from the seasons, we learn from times in the year and everything comes in its own time. And the idea recently somebody was sharing about fruit. Fruit doesn't come as soon as you plant the seed. You have to let it grow and then mature and flower, blossom, and then you get the fruit. So these things that when we realize for ourselves we live in such an instant society we've instant food instant entertainment mm. all of these things we want the results instantly but the journey the process is so much apart and the waiting makes it all the sweeter you know if you wait for fruit to ripen it's all the sweeter rather than just trying to pick it when it's not ready all yeah of these wonderful things yeah that's um i just think when you said pick it when it's not ready you know, you know, you can apply that, definitely apply that to life and business, can't you? You know, we want results now, now, now. And sometimes it takes time for things um, to be nurtured and, and then to flourish. Um, our, our family, we planted some garlic cloves in March. And um, I then had a look at how long, and it said up to six months it could take for them. And I was like, okay, you know, fair enough. We'll keep checking. And we pulled one up last month and it was too small. And it was lovely. We could still eat it. But I said to the children, we need to let the others just another couple of months till we can really, you know, enjoy a bigger bowl until it's completely ready. <laughs> yeah. Get more garlic for our garlic. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know this morning I was in the garden just watching the bees again. Um, and I thought to myself, you know, they're, they're so busy. They just know their job. They know their job. They do the same role every day. They visit all the flowers and pollinate and... And I thought, regardless, you know, they wait and they watch for each flower, you know, the dandelions start, and then they, you know, they move throughout the seasons, they know what they're doing. Yeah, and there's just always an abundance for them. So, yeah, I just thought, you know, we could learn something from that if we just stick to the routines and follow the natural flow of what, what is ready and what's not ready. Um, yeah, there's always lessons to learn. Yeah, and learning then to listen and to trust ourselves, our own gut and our intuition, our own nature, and mm. what it shows us. Yeah. Yeah, very much. 
And I love there's a quote that says, nature doesn't hurry and yet it achieves all that it needs to. Yeah, yeah. And my boss in my first job, he used to talk about apple trees grow apples. They don't try to grow pears. They don't beat themselves up because they're not growing pears. They just grow apples and they don't force it. It just, that's just what they do. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. And that, I guess that links back to simplicity, isn't it? You know, if we keep things simple, and uh, we focus on, you know, what our inner nature is and what we want to achieve, then we can achieve that, not overcomplicate things. And also in terms of listening to our own inner nature, the, the thing of what lights me up, what draws me, even if everybody else around me doesn't get that, mm. if I do, that's my thing, and being able and confident and happy to trust that I my inner self knows yeah. and if I follow that it'll take me somewhere worth going so even if like happened to me at school your careers people tell you you shouldn't do that yeah. like maybe they would say an arts uh, focusing on art something artistic that's probably not going to make you a living is it you need a proper job yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was, um, I actually had that experience. So I did my photography A level. Um, I, I was actually awarded the exam prize. It was on surrealism, and my photography teacher said, you know, congratulations. I was like, oh, wow. But then I chose to do psychology at university, and my photography teacher said to me, why aren't you doing photography? And I said, well, I didn't know that was a job. I didn't know that was an option because, the, you know, you're, I think we're fed, or I don't know why, it just wasn't, I was told you go to university, you do this and, <laughs> and that's why, because that was what was kind of the expectations of yeah. culture and society that we grow up with, that that's what you do, you don't do that, you do that. Yeah, and it is interesting, I think, um, yeah, and I think I find it now even more fascinating that I've now come back to the photography and and. and that came about simply because I was like, well, I need to go back to work. What, what am I going to do? What do I love? Taking photos. So, and that's how I thought, yeah, do you know what? I've got to give this a go and yeah, pick up the camera again. And I love that. I love that you've kind of come full circle, that you listened to, what do I love? But that was the question that you asked mm -hmm. rather than how do I go back to what I did before or how do I use the degree that I studied for? But yeah. what do I love? Yeah. Yeah. And going back, you were talking about awe mm -hmm. and that there's awe in a sunset or a sunrise or a rainbow or any of these things. And also the awe in the little things. And that's my wild, as yeah. you can see on the screen, that it's W-I-L-D. It's an acronym. And my first letter in that W is for wonder, which to me is yeah. awe. And how even you pick up a leaf. And if you really look at a leaf in detail, every little thing in nature has like the fractals that you see in a leaf or a, a snail shell and all the little aspects of that so i think there's that in the in the connection and in the photography that you're capturing that yeah yeah the little details and i think um so i also I just relaunched my photography well well-being nature walks and that mm. is very much about focusing on the little details and inspiring people to step outside and to connect with nature every day and that can even literally just by using your senses but also by using your phone or a, you know a camera on the phone or a camera going for a walk and looking at those little details because the simplicity and the beauty of nature is everywhere and you know you can be walking and even a stinging nettle which is something that people think of in a negative like a negative frame um you know, if you look really closely, you can see the fuzzy, furry detail on the leaf and the symmetry. Um, and it's actually quite, you know, taking it from, taking a photo from the top, from the side, you can get so many different angles. Mm. And just really taking that that object. Um, yeah. And then I get, yeah, you can bring in the raindrops to that or the way the light is affecting the, you know, the object and really play with it. Mm. I think... That in itself, you know, using your camera in nature and allowing yourself to be creative and allowing yourself the time to slow down um, 
is really, really beneficial for health and well-being. It's that kind of mindfulness and, and perspective. So you can change your perspective. It can, and you, the, mm -hmm. the whole permission that you can take that time, that you yeah. can stop and look and really, really look and really see. Because we see these things around us all the time and we see nettles and yeah. we don't really look though do we we don't really appreciate the beauty and the simplicity and the wonder of a nettle and then there's the whole what nettles give us so much in terms of well-being as well mm -hmm. in you know eating a nettle or, or making a drink out of a nettle or putting it in soup there are all of these things that come from such a simple thing that we class as a, a nasty weed yeah yeah, which probably stems from childhood as well, I, I, I suppose. Yeah. But but you're right, yeah. And I think um, it's just about learning to take notice. Um, sorry. Apologies. <laughs> uh, learning to take notice, um, making that conscious decision to step out and connect with nature every day for your own, you know, for yourself and your, um, your inner wisdom. And yeah just you know what we love what we protect so again you know it kind of supporting um caring for our world as well but <clears throat> and even just the permission to look at something as simple as a nettle mm. or as weed as a nettle you know yeah but you can see the beauty in it and you can as well, I love that where you were talking about all the different ways so you can think of light, you can think of shape, you can think of colour, you can think of the leaves or the flowers or yeah. the stems or the hairs on it. And so it's looking at all of these different features. So maybe taking diff lots of different photographs at different times yeah. of the day, all mm -hmm. of these things. And just to to then, they kind of, to me, it opens up a whole new world. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see so much variety just in the one thing. Yeah. I know that it makes you appreciate, you know, that one item, but then also, you know, inspires your curiosity to look at other things as well, you know, to look at a daisy or even moss. I love moss. Mm. Oh, me too. <laughs> moss and lichen. Yeah, it's fascinating. And just the different colours. I think, yeah, it's, um, yeah, come winter, that's what I love to look at <laughs> on the walks. But again, yeah, just and I, what I something I share with taking images is that there isn't a perfect image; it's all in your mind. So it gives you that freedom and permission, like you said, to kind of be creative and not focus on you know your composition. It, it doesn't matter. Just the you know we all have a different view and different eyes. We'll see through see things through different lens. So it's really interesting to kind of just embrace that the freedom of expressing your creativity and your individuality and just really enjoying that moment to yourself and i love how you bring in the creativity and the individuality for me it's very much about that as well allowing your own perspective to shine forth allowing your own way of looking at the world and at what you see to come out and to be shared with others which is very much what I guess taking a photograph taking a photograph or drawing a picture yeah if you're then showing it to others that that's what that's doing it's helping them to see how you see things yeah yeah and um it's about you know being proud of what you do create as well um i did a few of these uh pre-covid i did some nature photo walks at school a local school and to see the children enjoy that process and then to be so proud of the images they created it was it was really wonderful and that applies to adults as well and i think as adults we forget to allow ourselves that time um and we forget to give ourselves permission to stop and it's such a simple process just going for a walk with the camera that it can be built into our everyday mm. um and we do benefit from that time so it's something that we should all be doing I think. And then if you take a camera and you take the photographs and we don't print them off so much anymore, do we? But you can even, I've got a, a wallpaper that I've created on Canva. I spend hours on Canva. I love it. <laughs> but you can create something that's still something you look at, still something you see, still something that takes you back to mm. those moments. 
So mm. although there's an aspect of, well, just be in the moment and don't worry about capturing it too much. But at yeah. the same time, if you can do that with also spending a little bit of time in capturing it, you've got that to look back on. You've got those memories to yeah. have them there fresh again. Yeah, and I think feelings. And I think um, it's when you are capturing that, you know, sting nettle or leaf mm -hmm. or frost mm -hmm. or whatever it is, that it is about your connection to that item. So when you're walking, it's not about just snapping away at everything and no. anything. Yes. It's about being drawn, you know, drawn to the bark on an oak tree or drawn to the way the light is shimmering through the leaves and, you know, taking a moment just to look up and think, you know, wow, that's pretty amazing. And then capturing it. And it's with capturing it, it and really looking at what you're creating um, that you can then, when you look back, you know, you might look back with, so your children or your partner or family on, on your phone and showing, oh, well, out for a walk today, look what I took photos of. Um, it brings you back to that moment, but also they'll be like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. Or it might also inspire them to take that time. Um, <clears throat> so it's pretty Definitely. Funny. And I think it's just exactly what you said there. It's not about snapping away. That's mm -hmm. when we lose the connection and we're not being mindful anymore. But when it is like you're describing on the walks that you do, no, let's stop. Let's look. Let's see it differently. Mm. Let's connect in with it. Yeah. And then let's take the photograph and yeah. capture the memory and have that yeah. to take you back. And another guest I had on here uh, makes beautiful nature inspired jewelry. And that's mm -hmm. what she does. She goes out and she collects an acorn or a leaf and then uses that as either a model or print, like the, the leaf, the pattern on the leaf. Yeah. to create jewellery that you can then wear like a pendant or something and then you can feel not only see but you can feel so she's going doing a tactile way of, of recapturing those moments and this obviously a visual way yeah, and yeah. you were talking earlier about what well, we were talking about bringing people out of their everyday and out into nature mm -hmm. and to me that that's one of the the great things of getting away from your everyday life and, and the way that it kind of holds you in a, in a mold because of, well, that's how you've always been. Why would you change? These are the expectations around how you live your day. It's your routine and your pattern. And it, you can kind of get stuck in that, but then yeah. to come out of that. And like you were saying before about drawing out the person of who they really are. Yeah. Giving mm -hmm. them that permission, freedom, space, time. Yeah. I think, um, being in nature allows you, you know, immersing yourself in nature really allows you just to to release any pressure um, and just to go back to who you are, um, you know, to, to clear your mind, to gain clarity um, in life and business, you know. So it's kind of just allows you the space to really process emotions or you know, stresses you may be having or just, just, it's just time out, isn't it? And, it? and it's just being you. There's no, there's nothing saying, oh, you need to, I don't know, wash up. <laughs> you know, you yeah. need to do this, need to do that, need to do that. You know, it's just allowing yourself half an hour or whatever it is, just to kind of, just to reconnect to yourself. And when you're out walking, just to kind of, to stop and I will regularly find myself kind of being drawn to sit down in the field or even to lay down in the field and just look up and just just ground and just feel at one, nothing, you know, nothing else going on, just, just to sit and to, you know, observe the world around me. Just be. Yeah, just be. Just be. Yeah. And I did that myself the other day. I lay down in the field and just watched the clouds. And it's, it's again, it's another perspective because we don't normally look directly upwards mm -hmm. so just to see kind of it was slightly framed by tree branches growing over and then I can see the sky and I can see the clouds and not be looking straight ahead but just oh it's a whole new, <laughs> whole new vista <laughs> yeah and I think that that is what's so amazing about the walks that you do and and what it offers people so I'd highly encourage anybody, if you're in the Bath, Bristol area, take a look at Claire's uh, upcoming events, because I think 
it really helps us to slow down and stop because we don't. We've lost many of us, not all of us. And that was one of the things of lockdown that really hit so many people. I heard from so many saying, I hadn't realized how busy I was until I was made to stop because work stopped. Mm. And suddenly I time that I didn't know what to do with or how to how to spend my time. And that's kind of weird as well. How how can I not know how to spend my time? How can my life have been so rigid and structured and crammed full? But now it's not. I don't know. I'm I'm lost a little bit. Yeah. It was um and many people I think have kind of had that realization, haven't they? And actually, you know, I hear lots of people aren't going back to the office full time because they yeah. want that balance now. They want to be able to walk the dog, or they want to be able to go for a lunchtime walk at home, or just to have more of a slow, relaxed morning. Um, which is great. It's great for our well being. Um yeah just allowing ourselves that time and it's actually great for our creativity and our intuition and our productivity whereas again kind of misbelief that we need to be busy and we need to be doing lots but actually when we can stop and do more of the being we are naturally more productive in the ways that are right for us as an individual because suddenly it releases all of this creativity and this space in our brain for what about that what about that and this connection to that and and Mm. all of those things yeah so and they've changed things in france haven't they where they work shorter hours but finding that people are at least as productive if not more so yes yeah and i think um i think i heard someone about a four-day week somewhere else as well where they said that is that France? I don't know if that's France. But they're saying that people are, yeah, if not as productive, but more productive because mm. having that time to just be and slow down and you know spend on yourself is actually allowing people to help themselves better and, yes. and be more creative with their, you know, with their work life. Um, and just be again, it's about doing things that feel good and knowing that decisions you make because you're more at one are the right decisions so really feeling into that instinct and that intuition and thinking you know should I be doing this or you know is this the right way to go so yeah it is it really does allow you that um to act from an all in a more natural way that feels good that feels more aligned and more congruent rather than well, one thing's pulling me one way, something else is pulling me another way, something else is pulling me another way. So my energies are scattered. Yeah. But bringing them all together in alignment and natural and connected and all these things. And I think it's brilliant that some businesses now are beginning to kind of catch on to this as well. And possibly with what happened during lockdown, we had to stop and we had to go home. And before, oh, you can't work from home. That just won't work. Mm. Oh, actually, it does. And mm possibly even works really well for some people some people it may not and that again comes back down to individuality and variation and it's wonderful and Mm -hmm. and rich and to be celebrated but for those that it does work for where can we create the space for that and allow that i think that's that's one of the gifts of lockdown that we can begin to explore that because we've seen that it is possible now yeah it's it's certainly possible i think there was always um concern about can we trust people? I think that, you know, that has been proved and people can be productive at home. And again, it is down to individual differences and some things don't work for some, but having that flexibility um, in business is really beneficial and allowing people to make more choices for their own, you know, what works for me. And I think that is really, really important. I think businesses who kind of embrace that will ultimately have you know be more supportive of their employees in and their well-being because they'll have people who really are aligned to their work because they're able to look after themselves as well and i think that's what a lot of businesses are beginning to realize now there's been a lot of emphasis on mental well-being as well Mm. and mental well-being in work so if businesses are open to that and progressive enough to think if we support our staff, we'll have greater retention. We'll probably have the right staff in the right roles. And 
that's bound to be a benefit. Yeah. So when you're taking somebody's photograph and mm -hmm. you've brought them out into nature and they're then able to breathe and relax and be themselves and you're capturing that. Yeah. Do you do that for businesses or is it more for individuals? And I know that you work with families. I think that's amazing. So yeah. can you tell me what sort of people you work with? So I mainly work with uh, people in the sustainability area. So people who are, my style of photography appeals to those who, um, have got that natural care for the planet and, that, uh, you know, creating change and um, are very much aware of the human side to business and appreciating individual differences and, you know, bringing everything together with the natural self and planet and people and aligning everything. So it's working with professionals who want to inspire others to care for our world um, and also sharing their stories of how we can make switches in our everyday life to live more sustainably um, and create a healthier world for everybody. Um, so that kind of involves sharing stories of how they live, you know, how they take time for themselves. So, in, in, you know, bringing in that well-being aspect of a business and sharing that. So it could be it could range from um, a well-being event for a business, say if they had a well-being day, and that's all about connection with employees and embracing the outdoors. Um, or it could simply be, you know, somebody, um, a sustainability professional, spending time in nature, uh, gardening, walking, it could be running, it could literally be whatever they do to support their own mental health and that. And stories like this are so valuable because if we can share this message, with others and make this mainstream and it's normal that we that we you know we put ourselves first and we need to look after ourselves and we can create you know a healthier uh, choices in the way that we live and the way that we um, buy products you know we choose we might choose more or we will choose more products which are more sustainable and support a better planet so it's kind of I help people bring it all together and really you know share those stories of how they can um, empower their audience to kind of live more consciously. I think that's so important because there are so many people now who are looking for these sorts of things, but mm -hmm. it's not always in the mainstream. And there are choices then to be made. I remember I used to work for a company that sold products mm -hmm. and I loved the products and they were vegan and cruelty free and all of these things, but they were all in plastic. So I said, I can't do this anymore. And I've now sourced other still great products, but they're plastic free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know where to find those things and you don't even maybe know where to start because you usually shop in a supermarket and there's, well, there used to be next to nothing in the supermarket, but I'm noticing that even the big brands such as Pantene, if we're allowed to mention names, they do, so they do um, shampoo bars so buying has there is a real power to the pound where yeah. we spend our money and you know how we we choose products and things really does have an impact on the companies mm -hmm. so if this is something you're interested in it's definitely worth lobbying for or buying things that you know you move away from the products you don't like and you support the yeah. ones that you do and you research and look and find the ones that you do because mm -hmm it is going to make a difference. The companies yeah. are going to have to listen. It's not that we as the consumer has to go along with what they provide. Mm. Our pound can influence what they provide so that we can change our ways yes. and our sustainability. Yeah. I think um, it's about making it easy for people yes. as well, because things, you know, there's a, I don't, I don't like the, really like the word greenwashing because it's negative, I feel, but there's a lot, you know, a lot of businesses out there who yes. seem to be doing the right thing and then you buy into the product and you're like, oh, hang on, like the plastic, you know, you buy a product and it arrives in plastic, you're like, why? Yeah. <laughs> there's no need, just that's oh. like one of the main main things that needs to change. Um, it's about making it easy for people. I think that's through working with professionals and creating imagery for them, you know, sharing um, that they, uh, I'm trying to think, 
uh, soap bars or shampoo bars or you know, sharing these everyday products that they use in their lifestyle in their images as well or telling yeah. a story about these products kind of makes it mainstream for others to think oh where can I get that or oh that sounds great and you know bringing the nature inspired imagery into it as well it kind of reinforces you know, we have to you know support the planet and we all need to make a change it's definitely inspirational because that's how I changed having oh. seen images and realizing all oh, these things are out there now all I have to do is find out where they are and because there's normally something on the product in the image that tells you even if it's not the image isn't necessarily focusing on that product but there's something there that lets you know mm -hmm. and it's why I will share photographs of the stuff that I use because mm -hmm. I think that it's kind of walking my talk but it's also showing others if, if this is of interest to you this is where you can find xyz yeah. and yeah. and that whole thing I think exactly like you're saying it's it's inspiring people it's informing people it's helping them yeah, there's so much haven't we bombarded with information and misinformation and just yeah. overload mm -hmm. so like you say making it easy making it simple yeah simplicity and ease in everything yeah. i think um something to do with like honesty as well because yes you know i share products and i write blogs about things that i've changed this year and you know i'm always learning so some stuff on there i had to remove products i found that it wasn't as ethical as i believed it to be mm. but you know that being honest about it i'm not doing that for any other reason just to share you know there's yeah. lots of these influencers you kind of there's yeah. hey there's paid stuff isn't there and you know we're just sharing from the goodness of our heart just to make you know try and help others find products that work for them um and the good of the planet too so yeah it's so kind of about working together in that respect but also making it easy for people to find these items otherwise there is a sense of overwhelm yeah and for me it's about this is my passion yeah, yeah. it's not what it's not where i earn my money but no. it is my passion and if you are interested in the work that i do it's probably your passion too yeah so here's some yeah. stuff and just and because as well the company that i found that well companies that i found they're generally small companies one or two people yeah. there's one that's just two sisters lovely lovely company life before plastic and yeah. i buy most of my stuff from them and every time bless them they they really have good customer service they get this and they put a little note in a personalized note every time i buy something from them. Oh, that's so mm. when you have a company like that that care about the ethics that care about their customers that obviously care about the planet yeah you want to support them don't you yeah it's, it's again connection yes and so um, I've been buying my soap bars and shampoo from uh, one lady who makes her own up in Gloucestershire. And she, um, oh, Olive and Rosie, I think the company's called, but she, again, the last one, she, she wrote me a little letter to say thank you so much. But it's really, it's really lovely to know, you know, what, one of the reasons I'm buying is because I love the product and it's natural and just really enjoy using it. But also, I know that I'm supporting one per, you know, one person with their business. And if I can share that, how wonderful her soaps are, and help her business as well, then that's even better. So yeah, that's it is lovely to be able to do that. And it's it's supporting that shift as well, isn't it? Mm. Away from the things that we don't want, the plastics and the chemicals. And it's like we've been talking about, just supporting people to know where where do I go for these things? Because it took yeah. me quite a while to find products that I liked and easy to buy, easy to, mm -hmm. to get them. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot, as a, oh, there seems to be a bit of eco-anxiety at the moment as well, so people mm, yes. seem to switch off. Well, not, so, yeah, I don't know, seem to kind of step back, always too much, don't know what to do. It's so, that kind of fatigue of just this overwhelm. Yeah. I don't know what to do with it, I don't know where to go, I don't know what choices to make. Mm, yeah. So you can help by sharing the things that we, yeah, we use, and that's great. So uh, you also work with families. What yes. sort of thing do you do there? So with families, it's um, very much about embracing nature and getting outside and letting the kids run wild. So, <laughs> and the adults too. Um, so we will usually meet uh, in a place usually that the family's familiar with because they've already got so the, the photos that we capture will then have when they're looking back and the mem you know, those memories are real um, 
So we'll go to a woodland or a beach or, you know, anywhere, really, a park, and just play. So go on a walk. Uh, the kids will play hide and seek. Mum and dad will join in. You know, grandma and granddad might come too. Dogs usually come, <laughs> which is great. Um, and they go on, a, go on an adventure. I have families build dens and we capture, I just, I stand back and observe mainly. Uh, occasionally I will kind of give a bit of guidance, you know, oh, let's play this or let's play that or can you catch mum? And, but once the family, you know, everyone gets going, it kind of just, yeah. Has a life of its own and just. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah, and it is lovely. I mean, I've been on family photos where we've picked blackberries and kids, you know, had blackberries all around their face. Oh, and, yeah. 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 Um, occasionally they might bring a snack and enjoy, you know, sat down on a picnic rug and mm. yeah, but it is, it's very much a cap about capturing their real memories. So real life moments and that real connection and that, you know, the laughter that you, you can't, you can't get from a studio. It's about they're really just relaxing and again just that ease and just having fun I was just thinking actually when you were saying describing what a typical family shoot is like mm -hmm. they must all go home just giddy with giggles and fun and laughter yeah. and it's, wonderful memories I think so and um are you the children usually invite me back <laughs> yeah. which is really <laughs> lovely <That's good. laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's a, a real affirmation of what you're doing isn't it and it's a real contrast like I hadn't really consciously made that contrast between being in a studio which can be great and have lovely photographs at the end of it yeah. but you're creating I think so much more and particularly yeah, as you said they, they go somewhere where they're familiar so that every time they go back there yeah it'll be oh do you remember when we did that day and we were playing this and doing that yeah. and the whole idea of play is just so precious I think and, and so good for our well-being and I have a photograph that I use quite often with a quote we don't grow old because we stop we don't uh what is it we don't stop playing because we grow old we grow old because we stop playing yeah yeah and that if we can keep that sense of fun and it's with various things we've been talking about today, it's it's reminded me about just ease, simplicity, but openness, curiosity, exploration, adventure, yeah. uh, fun, play, creativity, all of these words, I think they're just, maybe they've been in some ways overused or dismissed, you know, like love, we love everything, don't we? Oh, I love Coca-Cola or I love, you know, all of these things. But when you can really just reconnect with what does that word really mean to me what does it conjure up for me what does it represent for me what does mm. it how would I do that how would I be that I think yeah that's so precious and so special and to have that opportunity where no today you have to have fun <laughs> you know <laughs> today is not work today is fun you must have fun that is my instruction <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think um I I mean especially for dads who yes. don't, you know, it's not, nobody particularly likes having their photos taken. We've all got some reservations, but taking parents and, you know, family into nature, again, you've got that re relax and ease and then just run wild um, and just, just be yourself. And it's great. It is brilliant because you have so many different personalities as well and people can just be themselves. So it does release that, yeah, that kind of, it's that freedom it goes. And being able to explore children. And in terms of reconnecting children to nature, they're always, they're naturally curious. They love to explore. Yeah. Um, everything's an adventure. Mm -hmm. So, if we, yeah, <laughs> as adults, we can kind of embrace that with them. Then you're just making happy memories. Um, and when they look back at them, when they're, you know, 20, 30 years old, they'll recall that special place, it's a special family place. And probably want to reconnect, recreate the day, yeah. particularly if they've got their own kids. Yeah. But what you were saying there about not wanting to have your photograph taken, that was always me. I hated having my photograph taken. There are probably loads of photographs of me as a kid with a big grumpy face on. Because <laughs> take that camera away from me. I hate them. <laughs> but if it was, and, and if you've got a family shoot and there's a child or any of the members who don't want to have their photograph taken, it can be really 
difficult and you might end up with some shots that perhaps yeah. weren't what you expected and poor person who's having to take the photographs as well but if you could I think go out into nature where kind of forget there's a photographer there and just play make a yeah. den yeah. make mud pies pick yeah. blackberries yeah. then you're not worried about well, how do I look you know right. you've got beyond that yeah. and you're just having too much fun and then you look amazing because you you are relaxed and you're laughing and you're having yeah. such a great time you're in your moment yeah yeah so I think it's a fantastic idea for anybody who struggles with getting some nice photographs of family groups yeah and it's um in terms of that play again I've seen we're talking about play you know that's something also that I ask people that work with on brand you know personal branding sessions as well you know what do you do for fun what do you do to play mm -hmm. you know let's capture that because that is where you come alive and you know I've had women women balancing on logs and in the woods and <laughs> capturing fish and it's fun and it and it makes you laugh and it makes your eyes light up and it's because you're in the moment again you're you know you've, you've forgotten about the camera you're not focused on all you know what side should I do you know it's all very relaxed and it's and it is fun and that's what life's supposed to be isn't it fun and I love that idea of doing that sort of shot for business shots because recently particularly we're starting to realize how much people buy from people mm. and I don't want to just see your professional side that's great and it's good to know that but who are you yeah. who are you as a human being and if I meet you how do how will I relate to you what sort of personality do you have what do you enjoy mm. is it similar to mine you know because in depending on what you're buying that can be quite important and just to know that you are a human being and that you do have fun and, and you appreciate how important that is in life yeah yeah so that 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 kind of it's that permission too i'm a professional but i have fun yeah fun yeah. is important we should take fun very seriously <laughs> yeah definitely it is i think um you know, having professional, just professional image can almost be a bit off-putting. It's like, oh, yes. it can almost be intimidating. I think sometimes you just look at a website and there's just, you know, all professional suits. And it's like, you know, who is that person? You know, at the weekend, what do you do? A lot of people have dogs, you know. Let's get a picture of you capturing your dog or, you know, having fun with your dog, for instance, for your dogs. Let's paddleboarding or wild swimming. You know, that's kind of, where do you go for your time out or... Just to just to be you, you know. What what do you enjoy doing? And it's that those moments, you know, showcase the real person and you know your passion, uh, what drives you, and you know just that why you're doing what you're doing. Because behind every business, there's people, and that's the real thing that shapes a business. So let you know we need to showcase more of who we actually are. And like you were saying about how it lights you up. Mm. that if you have a photograph of yourself in a suit and it might be your normal everyday wear and you might be quite comfortable in it but at the same time it is there's a, a, maybe cold is too strong a word but there's a distance and professional distance maybe is a, a thing but when I can see you passionate and inspired and it, it you know doesn't have to be that I'm playing silly stuff we see maybe loads of those kinds of photographs on uh, Facebook or whatever. It's not that kind of play, but it's that I'm a human being. You can connect to me, you can relate to me. And if anybody owns a dog, you know what that's like. You go to the park, you see somebody with a dog, you can talk to them. Yeah. Automatically, if you have a dog and they have a dog, you're going to talk to them. And I'm sure it's probably the same with kids. If you have a kid, then you can relate to somebody who has kids yeah. and oh, what's it like for you at this stage, that stage. So if you're a wild swimmer, a lot of people are wild swimmers now. So that's a real mm -hmm. thing. Instantly, I know what to talk to you about. We've got a thing in common. We've got a connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's about just kind of like rewild for me, I, I'm mm -hmm. rewilding ourselves and rewilding rewild our souls, our minds, and also business, you know, business kind of just bringing back back to basics you know who we are what we do and you know bringing that all together um and connecting on like that really honest person person to person rather than with that front there yeah 
Hmm. And I, I have a quote, I can never remember it word for word, but it talks about how wild isn't chaotic and crazy. Wild is actually just who we really are. Yeah. And we, we often use it in a slightly almost negative sense of, oh, wild, wildness. We think of maybe an overgrown garden that you want to tame. We want to tame this wildness. Yeah. But instead, when we can just allow the wildness to be itself. Mm -hmm. If you look at predators in the wild, mostly they're actually being quite calm because mm -hmm. they're conserving their energy for when they do have to go out and chase or hunt. And you will even see on nature programs in Africa where the predator, the cheetah or the lion, or whatever, can walk through the antelope. The antelope will know it's chasing me or it's not. If it's not, I'm just going to keep grazing and they're just going to walk on by. Yeah. So when we can be that in tune with our environment and, and ourselves, I think it's such a, a gift for the world and for ourselves, for the well-being of both. Yeah, and that's, um, it reminds me of like, going back to balance, isn't it? Everything, yeah. living in harmony and living in alignment with each other. Um, you know, not taking, take, 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 take from nature, but yeah. just taking a little and then actually giving back, you know, so... All of my photo shoots I donate five percent to tree sisters for that you know to help restore our planet because if I'm walking outdoors and working in nature then for me I feel that you know I need to support nature too because that's really important um so it's about that harmony and that balance and yeah just kind of living just I don't know as naturally as we can and just having this conversation, it's kind of been playing in the back of my mind of how amazing this is, that this is where our world seems to be going. Mm -hmm. Certainly in a lot of what I'm seeing, where businesses like yours are going, listen to yourself, give yourself time, give yourself permission, allow yourself to have fun, allow yourself to be who you really are and connect with the planet and support the planet. Yeah. And that will support you, it will support your family, it will support your business. Where are we, you know, what, what potential have we got? What is the world going to look like in five years time, 10 years time, if more and more and more of us yeah. go down that route? Yeah. What, what are we creating it could versus, be. versus where we're coming from? Where are we going to? Hmm. I think, um, like I always think, you know, where we currently are, isn't an option for me so you know trying it's to create something no um we have to you know embrace this more natural way of living and embrace this like you said where could we be in five years it could be wonderful you know 10 years 20 years it could be you know visions of you know green landscapes and urban environments and it could just you know mm -hmm. bring in nature into cities it could be really quite amazing to see and I think that's another thing that photography really does, because sometimes it's so hard to imagine. Mm. What could it be like when I'm looking at what I see out of my own window, maybe, and it's just brick walls or whatever, concrete. It's hard to imagine more than maybe, oh, I'll stick a tree on that pavement. Mm. But actually, what could it be like? Yeah. And photography is one of the ways that we really can get to see it could be like this. and. Mm visioning for so many people having something you can actually look at and appreciate is a great way of helping to bring that into being yeah the energy of, of manifesting yeah yeah so thank you so much claire it's been an absolute joy having you here and being able to talk about all of these things and to talk about the amazing work that you do so again i highly highly recommend go and take a look at at claire's uh, website because the images there are beautiful they are they do bring clarity they have such a, a beautiful simplicity you can connect in with them they will help you just to go and get lost in that mm -hmm. sense of nature and and being in the great outdoors and all that that brings so thank you again so much it's been great to have you here it's been lovely. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much.
Absolute pleasure. And also just to share that if you're interested in getting to know a little bit more about how stress impacts on your well-being and the things that you can do to start to support yourself in releasing some of that stress, exploring, understanding, releasing uh, and having compassion for where you are in the moment so that you can then move forward from there. I'm running a masterclass next Wednesday. It'll be on my Equenergy Wild Wellbeing group uh, next Wednesday, 18th of August at 12 noon. So if you're interested, come along and join me. So uh, I'll be back again next week with another guest, and it's going to be Victoria Jones of Victoria Jones Wellbeing, looking at women's health and hormones. So hope to see you then. Bye for now. Bye.